The current time of morning, early. Purpose for being up, dentist. And unfortunately, I had to get up at 4.30 to get ready for my dentist appointment because one, I wanted time to wake up because two, it's a two hour drive for me to get to our dentist. And you know, yes, I could have changed dentists, but my dentist is my brother-in-law and he's a really good dentist, and so is the hygienist. So decided to keep making the trek every six months, so it's worth it. But just trying to get myself ready to actually get behind the wheel, which should be in about 10 minutes. Before I go on, I have a very shameless promotion of my daughter's new YouTube channel, named none other than New England Simple Living. I know she just posted a video called Digging Up Sugarwood where she goes out and digs up parts of our property and finds little treasures and then she will share with you the things she found and then she does some research and shows when they were made. Now I think of Shannon as a little girl still but she is a woman in her 30s. She's a chef She's an accomplished artisan. She's a forager and loves to make tinctures and work with herbs. She has a lot to share and a lot of knowledge. She's just learning how YouTube works, but I can assure you, she is very creative and her videos will be very entertaining as her skill and knowledge grows with the YouTube world. For those interested, I do hope you go over to her channel, watch it, subscribe, give her a thumbs up, because Shannon is on her own quest to share with you New England Simple Living. Thank you for letting this proud mama share. Now back to our little trip. We're going to go to Lexington, and then we're going to go to an inn, and then we're going to go to Concord and some shopping. We have some things going on here.
Well, the sun did pop out a bit. I am very excited. I'm gonna head over to Buckman's Tavern. Now, I'm going to guess they're not open this early, but I wanted to show it to you. I'm just gonna walk through the visitor center here. I think after this, I'm going to go and maybe get a coffee at the Inn at Hastings Park. It's a beautiful inn. I've had it in one of my videos before, I believe. It's been in one of my past magazine issues, but I'm so close. I think I'll go there and maybe get some scrambled eggs. Let me show you the Buckman's Tavern. I love how there's things like this that are still available and were preserved to share. As I will mention in a moment, this tavern was closed, but it is a wonderful museum inside full of history and information. But a little bit of information from the Lexington Historical Society's website is the Buckman Tavern was built in 1710 and was a gathering place for both locals and travelers and the site for many important town meetings. Captain Parker and his militia gathered in this tavern in the early morning hours of April 19, 1775 to await the oncoming British Redcoat troops. For those of you who have watched some of my past videos, I've shared that my fifth great grandfather Elijah's story was part of the Sons of Liberty, and I like to think that he may have sat at this tavern too. And now seeing this picture, I'm realizing that it took me six years to purchase this book in Essex, Connecticut, when it was in my own backyard. If available, I will add it to my Amazon store and I will add a link below for anybody interested. Well, confirmed, the tavern was not open for touring at this point. So I'm gonna head over to Inn at Hastings Park and see if I can get a coffee and maybe some scrambled eggs and enjoy a little lunch. I might be meeting one of my girlfriends a little bit later, seeing if our schedules can align. And we'll just go from there because today I'm playing hooky. The parking lot for the restaurant was full, so it does say to park on a side street, which I just did. The inn is right straight ahead. And like I said, in the past, I've shown this in my issues of New England Fine Living magazine. And I did a little photo shoot here for a tea that they were doing. The Inn at Hastings Park was a partner of New England Fine Living magazine. And this was a photo shoot that I styled and photoed to introduce their new tea that they were gonna be hosting. And this was so fun. I went out and bought flowers and accessories. And then, oh, no, this is something Nora Murphy sent to us. Back to my page, here we go. Um, I got silver containers and I put herbs inside and I got all kinds of little things just to make you realize that this was a formal little tea. I got honey sticks and I got some eucalyptus and I put those inside of napkins with their tea menu. This was a lot of fun and then I got to enjoy the tea sandwiches that the chef made. This is a flocked wallpaper that's inside of the front hall. It is so fun. I'm gonna show you three wallpapers and I'm gonna to try to find my old notes of who the manufacturer is. If I can't find them, I will try to find out. Luckily, the full parking lot meant there was a business meeting in the other room. So I had the dining hall to myself. 
when I first saw this wallpaper, I looked it up because it reminded me of a stay we had at the William Haskell House in Ipswich, and I was looking for a faux paneling for a previous home, and it was not the Groton House. So this color might work with the Tally Ho Room. You never know, and I'm going to check it out. Well, I am finally going to go in to Louisa May Alcott's house. Can't even tell you how many times I've been here, walked by, just never been in. So I'm gonna do it. Well, note to self, make an appointment to do that because these are scheduled walking tours and the one I just walked in had started already and I don't want to wait right now for the other because I don't know what my schedule is a little bit later. So I'm just going to keep on driving about and if I can make it over there, I might even go and bring you to the cemetery where a lot of famous poets are buried such as Walden and Thoreau and Louisa May Alcott and uh, a few others. Like I said, I might get distracted by a store, who knows, and I can always return. On another early morning, I needed to bring Ben to a car dealership to pick up his truck from getting worked on, and I was waiting for a store to open, so I went to the grocery store, and I ended up buying quite a few vegetable seedlings, so I was excited to get them into the garden and get things started. Well, for three days, maybe four, we have had gloomy, rainy, stormy, foggy weather, and I grabbed my camera because the sun came out and then it went back in. But I thought I would give you a little update of what I've been doing. Um, I know in one of my recent videos, I mentioned I was going to be getting some help here. Well, so far, uh, they haven't been able to fit us into their schedule. So I have been quite busy in between doing some other projects and jobs and also um, helping with some family members that have been ill. So. I just thought I would do a quick update here and share some things that have been happening in the garden. So let me start over here. I've been cleaning up the beds and I have been adding a lot of the vegetables that I picked up the other day. I had all the best intentions of starting seedlings and, and planting seeds and the whole works, but 
it just doesn't seem to be something that I'm cut out for, at least not right now. Um, I was joking the other day that my way of growing lettuce is buying the seeds, getting the dirt, getting the containers, and then going out and buying lettuce that I've planted. And it's already growing really well. Um, I'm, I'm pleased. I have amended the soil. Uh, this is what we worked on two weeks ago. And I thought I would also mention while I was here, thank you so much to the many of you. I'm not just one or two, but many of you who asked why I didn't use a wheelbarrow or the gator to carry all the soil over here. I 100% could have, but I made the conscious choice to carry the bags for muscle tone, exercise. If you don't use it, you lose it. And I had the cart right next to me walking back and forth and I had the gator right there in the shed. It was on purpose. I made the choice to and I enjoy it. I love some physical work as long as it's not too hot out. Uh, my internal temperature gauge has broken over the years. So no, that was actually enjoyable for me. But thank you so much for those of you who commented and reached out. My shoulder's fine and everything else is great. So um, all's good. And if I need to, like when I do the stones, I'm going to be getting a lot more stones. I can assure you I will be using something to help me move things over. But I am pleased with how this is coming out. I need to get more bags, so I will be doing some more carrying, but I've got to fill these in. And I did put over here, I have the strawberry mint, and I, over here I have the orange mint. I still need to plant the chocolate mint. Strawberries are really starting to do well in here. I actually saw a pop of red in here. I do have one little strawberry. The lemon box is going to need some love. I'm going to be pulling up the lemon verbena from last year. The lemongrass, I honestly thought it might be a perennial because a lot of like the sea grasses that I've done have come back. I was waiting to see any source of green or any little bit. I'm not sure, it's just not happening. The lemon thyme is coming back. So what I think I'm going to do is plant another lemon verbena. I'm gonna do another lemongrass, but I'm definitely gonna do lemon balm so that I can keep harvesting that for the herbal tea. I actually have to order more of the canned herbal tea for my website for the online store because that sold out so quickly. But I also have on there um, Passion Peach, I believe it's called, and Earl Grey and Blueberry. The blueberry smells really good. So, because um, my blueberries, yeah, not so much luck here. I ended up putting these two blue containers in the back of these two raised boxes. This one, I only put five cloves of garlic in here. So in the back, I will do something else. Maybe the potatoes will go in these. And I'm going to work on this bed and try to get rid of whatever's growing there. We discussed that before. And I just put the cloches over here while I was working in the other beds. Lot to do over there though. Um, and over here, I have been pulling up and there's still quite a bit to do, but I got stuck in a rainstorm the other day. I have been pulling up all of the weed barrier. I'm gonna be cleaning this up, resetting the, the edging. I have this briar bush to, to, uh, to get rid of. It keeps coming back. It says it's a black raspberry online, but nothing's happened for three years. So, or this is my, this will be the third summer going in and nothing's happened there. I'm going to start planting the lavender on this side. So I have two of them here and they've already shot up quite a bit since I bought them when I showed you. So that's all new growth there. So I'm gonna be planting all of the lavender here. And then on one of the inside gardens, I had so much tall phlox that was taking over. So I spent some time and I dug up some very large, very large uh, bundles, groups. What do you call those plugs? I have no idea. Um, I, I dug up a lot of the tall flocks and I thought it would be pretty here as a backdrop behind this section, which we still don't know what this was at one point. I did have somebody ask me 
Actually, I'm just going to see something here. I'm just watching the water ripple in this, and I'm wondering if that's actually the vibration of the plane. It's not me. That's weird. Don't know what's vibrating. Anyways, um, yeah, that's why I go for the tangent. So here's some of the the stuff that I've been pulling up in this, some of the carts. But I thought this would be really pretty with uh, a backdrop here of the tall flocks. I did have somebody ask if there was a pool here, and then I had somebody mention we should put a pool here. Well, I'm gonna to try to find the photo. If you can see where that tall flagpole is, there was an in-ground pool right here, heading towards the flagpole. So this is all filled in where there was one large built-in pool. So we think part of this was just reusing a lot of the patio that went around it. So we are glad there's not a built-in pool. We've had a couple homes with them. Oh, beautiful big hawk. Um, we had a couple homes with built-in pools and a lot of work. They are a joy to be in, but just a lot of work. If anything, we're gonna be doing more gardens out here, another small building, who knows? I have some more lilies to clean up here, but I'll show you what's been going on. In here, this is where I took out all of those tall flocks. I left some as a backdrop and I put in the ranunculus. This is that beautiful pink ranunculus that I had out for Easter. It's gone past, but um, it seems to be actually blooming a new flower right here. So it seems happy where it is. And also from the Easter basket, I peppered in some of the hyacinths and I planted some tulips and I cleaned this area up. So I'm gonna be bringing in a little bit more soil because this has quite a big divot from where I took out the plants. I'm gonna bring in some more soil and then this will be the dark mulch. In this area, I was going to move the peonies over there, but once the daffodils pass, then the peonies will fill up but they kind of fight and get tight with the lupins. Lupines, lupins, I say lupins, but I think it's lupine. Um, so I don't know what in this area I will move, but something's gotta go. But this area is definitely getting cleaned up. I built part of the wall up, this was all fallen. So I built that up. And then this part of the wall over here, it just kept falling. So I'm going to work that into the plan here and maybe put some soil in there and put some flocks or something that's kind of creeping and pretty because this this wall this is not an original old wall to the barn I don't think because inside there's concrete blocks I also did a lot a lot of work over here I have still quite a bit to do but I put the bleeding heart up oh, come over here out of the gardens you goober <laughs> I put the bleeding hearts in here because once the lilacs bloom, there'll be enough shade for the bleeding hearts to keep growing. I have a pile of some black-eyed Susans that I need to move and I'm gonna replant those elsewhere. So this definitely has a lot more to go, but there's some plants here that haven't come up through. And right now I put things in just because of, I had the plants and I wanted to get them in. So this I guess is turning into a purple and white theme garden. It looks kind of messy right now, I know, but it will get there. I have some white phlox over here I need to plant, and I'm kind of in a standstill again because unfortunately the windows did get delayed at least another week, which might be good because they're going to be standing here putting the windows in, and I've got all these flowers. They said they'll do their best possible not to damage them, but I think the daffodils and tulips this year be cut into bouquets and then I'll just leave the greenery until it dies back. But the windows definitely have to come in. I have some primrose here, yellow and purple. And on the hydrangea over here, I have a lot of new little buds. Let me see if I can focus in. So everywhere I trimmed. So on the ends of all of these, there's new buds. So this is going to do fine. 
and also this area here with all of the perennials, those I have to move because this is going to be all dug up as well. We did ask the landscapers and the gardeners that we, we want to focus on the front this year. I was going to ask them to focus on the back, but Ben and I both agreed that the front of this poor house, this is year number three, that we really haven't done anything to the yard. We've certainly done things to the house, but not the yard. So we're going to do the bark mulching out here and the edging and take care of this. All the trees here seem to be blooming at different times. On the right hand side, the leaves are starting to come out and on the left hand side, nothing. It's so strange, it's like the Forsythia's out back. just walking into this room realizing this is really the only time of the day that has some good sun coming in this room from the back window. This is the room that we're looking at the leather sectional for. So it would be going here along the side and then we'd do another chair here or we would recover one of these. I love these swivel chairs but they, unfortunately, they're too big for in the kitchen. They're too big for anywhere. These were ones that my mother had, and they're so comfortable. So I don't know what to do. Maybe they'll end up in our bedroom, and then I will bring the wing chairs to maybe that back wall. And then those two chairs, I'm not sure what I'll do with. Those were purchased for the store at one point, and I just ended up keeping them here for now. It's so Nice to see the sun out. We haven't had the sun out for days. My windows need to be cleaned, but it's nice to see green out there. This week's fun tidbit of information is an old tradition that I like to still carry on. I shared this over on Instagram and I may have shared this also during the Christmas season, but something I like to do is leave a candle in the window, usually one or two up in the upper windows, as a sign of welcome. Over the course of history, people put candles in their windows for many different reasons. Sometimes it was to let weary travelers who were passing by know there was food and shelter within. Sometimes they were placed in a window if a loved one went on travels and it was a way of guiding them home. It could have been if somebody passed away and it was a way of letting that person know they're going to be missed and they're loved. And also, on the other end, it could be if a child was born, it would be a way of letting neighbors know that they have arrived. I love this tradition. I'm going to keep carrying this tradition on. And let me know if this is something you already do, something you might like to try, or what do you think about this tradition? Now here comes another shameless promotion. I thought at this time I would share a few things that have just hit our online store. I do have some window decals and bumper stickers. We have some delicious hot fudge and caramels made here in New England. I'm now carrying foxglove gardening gloves. These are so soft, they're amazing. They actually help keep the dirt from going in through the fabric and getting under your nails. That's amazing, washable, and you can even wear them for everyday use. And I also have Bergen and Ball deadheaders in stock, and it's gardening time. Why not share?